Hi, this is Dr. Mercola. And we all know that exercise is a crucial component for being healthy. And uh, today I want to give you a few specific tips on how to apply that exercise into, into their own life so that you can really maximize the benefits. Now, for myself personally, most of my the time I've been exercising about 45 years or so has been done the wrong way and I don't want you to make the same mistake. So really it's hopefully you can learn from some of the mistakes I made and, and not have to make them yourself. I first learned about really how to properly apply peak fitness or high intensity type of exercise training programs with Phil Campbell and I've done a number of videos and interviews with him on that and you could certainly look that up. But briefly, some of the benefits of this high intensity peak fitness type of training includes the ability to radically help improve your insulin uh, sensitivity, especially when you combine that with a low processed food, low sugar, low grain diet. And along with the diet, virtually, uh, you, you, know, you can virtually eliminate type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and optimize your, your high cholesterol ratios. Now, <clears throat> additionally, this high intensity type of training will also radically improve your body's ability to produce human growth hormone. And as you age, especially after you get about 35, 40 years old, the growth hormone that your body produces normally decreases and you can compensate for that with the right type of exercise. High intensity, not aerobic. Aerobic will not do that. Cardio does not increase your growth hormone. If anything, it decreases it, especially if you're over that age. So, um, and then now what's one of the other benefits is that it, it uh, doesn't make you any, when you do these types of high intensity uh, exercise it doesn't necessarily make it doesn't just make you better at sprinting but the studies also are that you can actually get better at aerobic type exercises aerobic types capacity uh, and it will also help conserve more sugar or glycogen in your muscles so you can actually better metabolize fat and optimize your body's fat percentage it's a great way for helping you speed your fat metabolism and burn your belly fat it's far more effect, efficient from a time perspective, and that's a limited <coughs> resource that more, more of us have. And for the most part, you can do these high-intensity exercises 20 minutes a few times a week. So what, is, what can you do? Well, without a, question, without a doubt, sprinting is the highest intensity training you can do. And it's probably, if you're going to consider using the sprinting, it's probably easiest to first start this with, on a recumbent bike, and, I, and I've got a demo of that. Or you can progress up to an elliptical. I'm not a big fan of using the treadmill for um, in t high intensity training or sprinting because of the, the relative risk there and the, and the time that it takes to get the, the treadmill up to speed and raise the, uh, the elevation. And then if you're at high speed and you're really exhausted, and you, it, I mean, obviously you can stop it all at once, but usually you want to decrease the speed so it does that very slowly. So there's a risk that you could fall off. And I'm not a big fan. You can do it, but I'm just not a big fan of it. Uh, so today's video, what I want to do is review actually running sprinting, which is uh, that you can do outside, uh, and it's a form of peak fitness in which you actually sprint, and it's by far the absolute cheapest form of exercise you can do because you virtually don't need any equipment or access to any gym, and if you do it the way I demonstrate, you won't even need shoes. Uh, so later in this video, I'm going to show you sp uh, sprinting on the beach and demonstrate that and which I, which I think is the ideal location on the beach. I mean, you could certainly do it in a park, uh, on a track, or even on a street, but the benefits of doing it on the beach is that you are grounded, and when you're grounded, you're going to be exposed to the flow of free electrons from the, from the earth into your body, which is a very powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, and will help thin your blood, so that uh, really gives you a lot of good benefits, and plus you're getting the negative ions from the ocean. So just like with exercising, uh, with uh, equipment, you for, it's really important, of course, to warm up. So I'm gonna, uh, you know, so that's really one of the post first important things to do is to make sure that you're warmed up. Uh, but when you choose to sprint, uh, there are really important additional stretches that is that are really helpful to do. And when sprinting is the uh, the simplest and the easiest to do, I want to strongly warn you that if you, it could be absolutely one of the most dangerous with respect to injury. And, and unless you are in phenomenal shape and have special training sprinting, it is really important to, if you're going to consider engaging in a sprinting program, to do it gradually. Do not go out and, and, and sprint full blown, or otherwise you're almost guaranteed to get injured. And, and I did, I want you to avoid the mistakes I did, because when I first went out 
and did this without the proper stretching techniques, I actually developed an injury in my adduct adductor muscle, one of my hamstrings, that uh, lasted for about four or five years. And I had chronic pain as a result. In fact, just recently was able, able, able to get over those through implementation of a stretching program that I'm going to demonstrate in a few minutes. Uh, and so if you ignore this step of stretching before you sprint, you're, there's a high, again, there's a high likelihood that you will get injured. So um, I've also trained many of my friends and family to do this type of high intensity sprinting and, and a number of them have become injured because they didn't incorporate this type of stretching. Uh, fortunately, their injuries would only last a few days, not a few years like mine, mine was. So uh, I thought this is a good time to demonstrate the stretching. So we really don't need much equipment. Uh, you can do this on the floor or your bed or uh, this for demonstration purposes, a uh, massage table, a uh, piece of rope. And uh, this is a technique that I've learned from, it's called AIS or active isolated stretching. It's not a static stretch. Static stretch could actually make things worse. It's more, it's a dynamic stretch where you're actually involved. And I've done some uh, videos on this before, but I'm going to specifically demonstrate the leg stretches, which is really important so that you can loosen up your hamstrings. So the key thing is, first you can wrap the uh, rope around your, your uh, foot, the bottom of your foot, and hold it, hold it, and you want to make sure that your leg is absolutely straight. And then you're just going to bring it back as far as you can, and you, notice that there's not much tension. I'm, I'm actively engaging my quads to bring, the, the bring, to bring this back, and then I put a little bit of a stretch on it, for about two seconds, and then I relax it and let it go down. And then I continue to do that, keeping it very straight, and at the same time trying to breathe out when you're doing it, and then coming back again. And you should notice that my leg will start to loosen up, that the hamstring will be able to go back further and further on each repetition. You want to do about 10 of these. And you'll, you'll feel a little bit of the stretch in the lower part of your uh, a leg, or upper part of your leg towards your butt. And can you see that going down that further each time? And you want to be careful, again, not to bend your knee. Because then, you know, if, if you bend it like this, of course, you can go all the way. But you want to keep your knee straight. And you do that about 10 times. Now the other, and then that's, that, that uh, stretches one group of muscle fibers, and then you can stretch a different set by wrapping around and moving, moving your foot inwards or medially. And then rather than coming straight over, coming over a little bit to your chest, coming, and then doing the same thing. And you're going back further and further each time and just exhaling as you bring the leg back. And do that about 10 times. And the last stretch you want to rotate your foot outwards and you want to bring it even further over towards your shoulder. This really gets the lateral fibers. Now, one of the other things that you can use in your stretching program, especially, uh, is the foam roller. I particularly, there's a lot of different foam rollers along 
in more inexpensive ones. I like this one. It's called the Trigger Point Roller. You can p find it on Amazon or a lot of stores. And it's, it's more durable. This thing will last you a long time, even though it's a bit more expensive. I think it's a, it's a higher quality one. But you can roll your hamstrings with this. Probably best to do on the floor, not on a mat. But I'm just for demonstration purposes. You can like cross your legs. Just really put all your weight on there and just roll that area. It gets right to the sore spot. There are sprinters, you know, world-class sprinters or professional athletes who have really flexible and stretched leg muscles, but they get a knot in there. And that knot sort of forms as an attachment where the muscle will contract around and they can actually rip the muscle too. So this, using a foam roller would be really helpful to help avoid those things. And these are really a good part of an exercise program. You pick them up again anywhere pretty much. So after you've done this stretching with one side, of course, that I just demonstrated, you want to make sure that you stretch your other side. So you have both sides nice and stretched. So, um, so after you have finished the stretching and it completed that, then you can go out and sprint. And I recommend sprinting barefoot as long as you can be confident you will not be stepping on any sharp objects that will injure you. Uh, not only is this uh, better running barefoot biomechanically for most of us, but more importantly, it will also ground you. And as I mentioned earlier, that will have tr help transfer more free electrons from the earth and, and, uh, and help really be a very potent anti-inflammatory. Ideally, you want to run with a minimal clothes on it and during a time of day where you can actually get access to ultraviolet B radiation. So it's where you're killing two birds with one, one stone and you're able to get some good vitamin D production. Uh, the reason I enjoy sprinting on the beach, as I mentioned, is because you also get the negative ions from the ocean. Now, with respect to running surface, uh, I uh, actually prefer to run uh, right up where the waves come up and roll back into the ocean. So, where the, that, because the, uh, the surface is a actually a little further, firmer, and it provides more of a support when you're running on it. And, uh, and, and also there's a little more water in that area so that the water serves as a conductor so you can actually capture some more free electrons as opposed to running on dry sand, which is actually kind of difficult to run. It's a different type of workout, though. So, of course, you want to warm up for a few minutes. You just don't want, even though you've stretched, you just don't want to go on and run full out. You want to do a warm-up so that your body gets used to it and you can run kind of slowly initially and maybe then run a few short bursts. Now, at the beginning, when you're first starting this process, you really, really, really want to uh, do a comfortable distance, maybe 50 yards, 70 yards or so. And as you can get better, you can increase the distance to about to a 20 or 30 second sprint. And I typically don't measure the distances, you know, with respect to the number of yards. You could, but I, I typically just do it to uh, the way I'm feeling. And uh, I run as, as hard as I can until I'm completely exhausted. And it, that generally is about 150 yards or so. And um, ideally, you want to work up to the point where you're doing eight. But if you're first starting this, you only want to do a few, maybe one or two. Uh, and listen to your body. Because if you have any pain, even though you've stretched and you've warmed up, if you have any pain in your hamstrings, you want to stop immediately. Because you never want to uh, injure them. Because that, that, that pain can actually turn into a really severe strain. So. Um, Ideally, again, you want to do about eight repetitions. And it's important to, uh, to rest between the repetitions. You want to recover somewhat. And, and the recovery typically is about a minute and a half or two minutes or so until you feel you've got your breath back. Um, now, the, the technique is also important, too, because many people, when they start, they're going to run, move their hands from side to side like this, like you would be running a long distance. But that's going to be very inefficient. And it's actually going to slow you down. So when you're running, it's very important to pump your arms really fast and keep your arms at the, on your, at the side of your body. And basically, your thumb is going to be coming up to your ear and then coming down really hard and fast. Your thumb goes down to your hip. So you're, and actually, it's this pumping action of your arms driving it down that's going to make you go faster. But if you're running like this, you're just going to slow yourself down. So it's just that pumping is really going to be really crucial to do if you're going to sprint fast. Uh, and, and so once you've done the workout, it's important uh, not to, to do sprint workouts two days in a row. Bad idea, because your body has to recover. Recovery is a really important part of the, the equation. You want to give your body at least two days rest and preferably three days rest. You can do this two or three times a week, but I would definitely not do it more than three times a week. Uh, and I personally rarely do it more than 
once a week. Typically, it's twice a week is what I'll do it because I combine it with my other workout program. That works well. You want to, again, listen to your body because recovery is going to be crucial. If you're young and you know, a teenager in your 20s, and you probably can get away with a little bit more, but uh, as you get older, the recovery becomes really essential. So um, again, this is just one inexpensive way to implement a uh, high intensity sprinting type of program. There, there are many more, but this gives you an opportunity, maybe a little tweak, giving the opportunity if you're by the ocean, you consider trying this again. You don't have to be on the ocean, you can do it in the park or at a track, but it's a really powerful way to make sure that you're achieving these benefits I talked about earlier. You just want to make sure you do it in a way that you don't, uh, that you can, you're able to avoid injury. So hopefully this has been helpful and it's be a tool that you can use to help you take control of your health.